All right, hey everybody. Let's see if folks are joining in. Awesome. Um, Stephen Lee here from the Archie Bray Foundation. Uh, coming to you for our Friday broadcast, not from the Bray today, but from my my basement bunker studio. Um, I uh, it's hard to believe it's been a week since we had a chance to. Uh, spend some time together last week. Uh, I did get my little tripod fixed, so hopefully that's easy to view for people. Um, but uh, what I thought is this week I'm gonna work on some of the pots that I threw on last Friday's broadcast. So as a bit of a recap, I've, I've been throwing this dark stoneware clay that we carry at the clay business. So it's a um, it's a Plainsman clay. It's M390. Uh, it's kind of a chocolatey brown stoneware that throws really nicely and I threw a few vases and um, just some different things uh, different forms last week and I'm gonna trim this one I've got some that I've already trimmed and then I put um, some white slip over the top of them and I brought some test tiles with me just been trying to run into the studio and, and throw some things into kilns just to kind of keep the uh, um, keep some momentum going with testing but so here's the clay you can kind of see the color of it right and the light's not great but it's sort of this dark reddish brown color and I fired one sample of it this is the clay in to cone 5 so you can see the coloration it's a bit orange uh, when it's fired which is kind of a nice you know nice warm color and then it's got this white slip over the top with some just sample carving on top of it I also threw one in a reduction kiln just to see what would, what it would look like. So that's, this is basically the same clay body, same slip. Uh, this one's fired to cone 10 reduction, which is kind of maxing out the vitrification of it. I mean, it's pretty tight, but it, it has this like really nice chocolatey brown color, which I, I think is uh, pretty sweet. Um, and then I have this one that I fired in a test kiln to what I thought was cone 10 oxidation, but then, you know, sometimes you load a kiln and then you just forget afterwards. Um, so I think it's the cone 10, but it looks almost exactly like the cone six or cone five. So I'm not 100% sure. I'm gonna have to re refire that test. Um, I also had this test that I threw into the kiln. So this is the M390 at cone 10 oxidation. And as you can see, it's pretty dark. You know, it looks a lot like this test tile here, you know, that I fired to cone 10 reduction. It's very similar. What I think might be happening is, um, I think it's possible that I, uh, that the, there's some lithium in this clay. So I think it might be fluxing it out and causing it to go sort of this darker brown. So not very nice. I threw my clear glaze on it that I use on my porcelain pieces. So it's the same glaze as this, this one, but it just doesn't look very good on the stoneware, so I'm gonna have to do some more testing on that. Um, let's see, I wanna give a kind of an up update. What I'll do today is I'll trim some of these. I think I'm gonna, I've got some pieces that I've slipped. I'll slip, put some white slip on this one, and then, um, you know, I'll give some updates about what's been going on at the Bray and, you know, some of the things we're working on as we're going through this. So, um, to start, I think what I'm gonna do is I'll center this pot on my treadle wheel and if you weren't here last week oh boy that's really pretty uneven here but we're just gonna have to work with it sometimes what I do is I'll yeah I think this is just an uneven pot but we're gonna make it work um, last week when uh, was my first broadcast from the basement and the wheel I'm throwing on is an old treadle wheel that I built when I was an undergrad uh, back at Alfred. So it's, you know, it was kind of the first major woodworking project I'd ever done. Um, but it's been really interesting revisiting it. You know, I haven't thrown on this wheel in quite a while, but it just has such a different rhythm to it than my uh, Shimpo electric wheel that I use in the studio. Um, I kind of like it. You know, it slows things down. You know, I think there's something to be said about the rhythm of making pots, like both in throwing and trimming. So. Um, I've just noticed like the way that I've had to sort of allow certain uh, irregularities to happen um, or embrace maybe, you know, so get this wonkiness to the clay. Uh, 
I was talking to the folks at the clay business. I guess I wanted to uh, let people know this, especially for the local folks. Is the Bray clay business is still open? Um, they're taking orders online or through the uh, through the phone and email. Um, some people had asked that. There was a, a question that got posted to the Instagram account that asked if the, the clay business was still operating, and they are in a limited fashion. So they're you know they're all spaced out there um, so that they're not in six feet of each other, but uh, we're trying to provide materials and clay for people as much as we can. Um, but uh, what the the people at the clay is, they were saying, hey, you know, during the broadcast, you should let people know that any tools or clay that uh, you're using, we'll give them 10% off. So if you're interested in trying out the M390 clay, you can order it online um, or any tools that I'm using today, I'll try to explain what they are. Um, those are also 10% off, so you can order them directly. So it's kind of a cool thing. Unfortunately, not all the tools I'm going to use today we carry at the clay business, but a lot of them we do. So um, you can kind of see if that will work for you. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm trying to level off the base of this vase form. And as you can see, it's pretty uneven. So I've got to just get to a a starting point where I'm trying to flatten out and level the foot as much as I can. Um, and I'll say again, if anyone has questions, I'll do my best to, to try to catch them as they scroll up the screen. Um, I suppose the big news this week at the Bray, you know, we're still under the shelter in place order. Uh, so we have some people who are working on site. Um, but unfortunately we had to make the announcement this week and it just went out on I think Monday or Tuesday that we're gonna have to cancel our summer workshops and then most of the event-based programming that takes place on campus um, and you know it's it was really a bummer like we were just trying to see you know if there was a way that we could like if things were gonna get better that we might be able to still execute some of that programming but I mean I think the nature of it is that there's so much planning that goes into a lot of events you know, like the Bray Bash or workshops too, that we just had to make that call. And I think that there are a number of craft schools that have uh, similarly canceled their summer programs. You know, and I think part of it too is just trying to be as uh, respectful to the people that signed up for those classes because, you know, if we kind of, if we know that we're not going to be able to hold, um, you know, those types of events and group gatherings with, uh, on, on our campus, like we want to make sure that we can offer the refunds and um, changes to travel plans, things like that as early as possible. So, you know, it really, it, it stinks. I mean, it's just, I think it's one of those things that unfortunately a lot of craft organizations and arts organizations are facing, um, as well as local organizations here in Helena. Um, but what we are offering, and, uh, you know, it's like we've, we are offering people, if they had to cancel on a, a class or a workshop, you know, we'll provide a voucher um, if you want to take a class in the future or a workshop in the future. We also are providing full refunds if that's, um, you know, if that's something that people are just in different financial situations. Uh, but we do hope that if, you know, some people can manage it, they might just choose to take a class next year or next summer when things are a little bit more, a little more normal. Um, and then we, of course, you know, because we have expenses that are related to all this and we have people who are teaching those workshops that, um, and classes, you know, there is also an option for people to donate their class fee to the Bray for a tax, uh, for a charitable tax deduction that they can claim on their taxes. And, you know, amazingly, we've actually had a lot of people who have chosen to do that, like, both in the workshops and the classes, which has been really incredible to see that. Um, quite a few folks who, who've chosen that route and have chosen to uh, take a voucher for the future. So thank you to all those who who have done that because it you know, really helps us out as we're trying to figure out what to do and how to adjust. Um, the other thing I think that's coming up at the Bray right now is, uh, you know, typically this time of year we're preparing for our big Mother's Day sale, which is uh, the Saturday before Mother's Day uh, in early May. 
you know, so people have been making work and, you know, we've been making planters and vases and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, it's just not feasible that we're going to be able to have a huge event like that where hundreds of people are coming to campus. So what we've done is we're really kind of scrambling right now, but we're pivoting that event uh, to more of a spring sale. So we're going to have an online spring sale, which, you know, I think will be nice because it'll provide people who aren't in Helen an opportunity to go um, hopefully see some of the work that's being made by the residents and by the uh, by the artists that are in the sale. And you can purchase work still online. Uh, for locals, there will be, we're trying to work out some sort of a arrangement for pickup when things improve, um, but then we can also ship stuff wherever we need to. So keep an eye out for that, and I think what the format's going to be is that it'll probably take place over a few weeks, and then I think we're going to do weekly uploads of work, um, maybe once or twice a week or once or twice a week, something like that. Um, so it'll, you know, you'll be able to have a chance to purchase work from the residents, um, see what kinds of things that they're they've been working on this winter. Uh, we also have had a long-standing relationship with Westmont Farm and Gardens, which, you know, normally what would happen is they would plant these plants in our planters and then we'd sell them locally. So we're working out whether we can provide like a voucher for a future planting for the locals um, and seed packets or something like that. So, you know, we're still trying to define what that's going to look like. Okay, so this clay, you kind of see how it's a little bit like wobbly, like when I'm, but I kind of like that because like I'm kicking the treadle wheel. So it, like I said, it has a certain rhythm to it. So it's nice that it, you know, if you kind of embrace that or just let that quality show in the work, then you also can uh, use the trimming lines as a way to mark that, mark that rhythm. a little bit of weight in that foot. Um, I think from the gallery side at the Bray, you know, we, we're looking at all kinds of things. Like I mentioned that we're, we're, we've had to cancel the, the Bray Bash, which is a beloved event here in Helena. I know many of you probably have been to it or have come to Montana for it. Um, and, you know, it's also the night of our auction, our big benefit auction. And we're looking at that too. I think we're still planning on having an auction that's um, mostly going to well, it'll take place online in some capacity. So, you know, Mara in our exhibition program, she's she's looking at different auction platforms that would work for us, um, so that we can make all that work accessible to people. So it includes silent auction work, cup auction, and then we're also uh, brainstorming about the live auction. So it'll still be quite a range of pieces from past residents and, you know, some really amazing work. I've already seen some of the stuff that's come in. Um, and I wanted to say thanks to all the, the artists who've been checking in with us to see if we're still doing it. And yes, we are still planning on having an auction, but, um, you know, if you stay tuned to the Instagram feed and everything, then we should be able to update everybody about what that's going to look like. Okay. So pretty decent. Oh, and then I guess for, if you're interested, so this is a tool I'm using that if you want to get a discount on at the clay business, so it's a Dolan trim tool. I've been using some form of this trim tool for years. I mean, ever since I was an undergrad, but it's the model 510. Um, great trim tool. I really like this one a lot. The one I was using earlier, this is the Bison Trim Tool. I think I've talked about this in a previous podcast. Um, this, These are great. These are super sharp. Um, we don't actually carry them in the clay biz because they're kind of custom-built trim tools, and they're a little bit expensive, but um, Chuck was going to check in and see if we can actually start carrying those because they're just such a nice tool. Um, the other one I, I really like a lot, this is the uh, trim tool that, sh that Mud Tools makes. Um, it's just, it's a really cool object. I mean, it's this very beautiful thing that has 
different shapes and sizes that you can use, you know, including this kind of flat angled trimming section on this side. But I do like this tool too. I use this occasionally on, on the work and it works really nicely on the stoneware, in fact. Okay, so let's take a look at what this what we've got here. All right, so this is a pretty tall foot, you can see. I like that, it lifts up the form a fair amount. I'm actually gonna do a little bit of trimming on the top half here, so I'm gonna recenter the top, or recenter it facing, or upright. And then I'll hopefully try to get some of these trim marks to come together. You know, I think what's been happening also on the Bray side is like, God, it's just been such a blur in terms of, um, you know, it's like we were just in like emergency mode trying to figure out how to keep things going with all the income coming to a halt from the education and the gallery. Um, you know, the gallery is still taking online orders uh, for shipment and people are coming in from time to time just to monitor that and pack work and ship it out. But we do have to be uh, conscious of the shelter in place order. So if you order things online, which you can still do, um, you know, we'll try to get it out to you as soon as we can. It may be a little bit longer than we normally take, but, uh, just something to, to be aware of. And I've mentioned in past weeks too, like this month I'm donating all the sales of my work, just hundred percent to the Bray, just to kind of help out a little bit. So if you're interested, I Brought some cups in there not too long ago. I've got some other different things, um, possible gifts, if, you, if you're so inclined. But yeah, it's been an interesting time for us to really reevaluate all kinds of stuff, you know, all these events, all these programs that we've been doing for so many years and see where potentially there's some opportunity that lies with, you know, now all the digital resources that exist. Um, you know, possibly to try to reach more people as well, because I think one of the things that's always been hard about the Bray is that you have to come to Montana to enjoy, you know, the campus and enjoy the people and the gathering, which I hope we never really lose out on that. But, you know, are there ways we can provide experiences for people who just can't make it in a given year? Um, so that's something that the staff are really looking into. And, you know, and they've, they've just been really great in terms of uh, not letting this paralyze them, but to, you know, really look for opportunities where we can. Um, let's see here. That's looking pretty good. I like, I, I like the shape of this, the, the proportion. And I just kind of cleaned up the, the rim somewhat. Get those trimming marks out of there. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cover this in white slip. Um, and the, my interest in using this dark stoneware has been to like, you know, put some white slip over the top of it and then use that as a way to create or carve through it to have some of the patterning. So it's maybe a different way to apply surface and decoration than the porcelain pieces, which I'm normally inlaying with uh, cobalt or copper slip. Um, and there's a few different ways. Like the nice thing about slip is you can play with texture or thickness. And I've been using this brush. This is a, a hake brush or a hake brush. I don't know the pronunciation exactly, but sort of a nice wide brush that you, helps you apply things like this in a broad stroke. So I'm going to mix this up. You know, and this slip is, it's just like a, Kind of a general white slip recipe. It's actually one I asked Sun Guya what what he used, um, and mixed to the consistency of like a thin milkshake, I'd say. But I really like this. It, it covers well. And for a form like this, I'm actually going to try to put the slip on the bottom half first. Um, Oh, Adam asked, Adam Field asked, is that ABF stoneware? It is not, it's the M390. So it's the Plainsman stoneware. 
uh, dark stoneware, but we do carry it at the clay business. And if you missed it earlier, Clay Biz is offering 10% off of anything that I'm using in this broadcast. And all you have to do, if you do it online, you, you can enter in the code Bray Broadcast, one word. Or you could call them and, and whisper it in their ear on the phone. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm I'm applying this slip, and what I like about these brushes too is that you get, they kind of load up nicely, so you get a lot of material. I want to make sure it's thick enough so that after it's fired, you still have some of that whiteness to it. Now that I've got some on the bottom, and I'm actually going to put a little dab on the inside of this foot, because why not? Okay, and I'm going to flip this over. This is a little tricky, I'm trying to recenter it. But anything's possible with a little bit of practice. One, I guess the other thing I want to mention, um, you know, I've been, every week I've been trying to Pedal the Bray memberships because, you know, it's with all this income stopping for us, you know, one of the ways that we can actually maintain some income is through contributions and donations. Um, and I have to say, like, the response from people has just been, like, pretty heartwarming and, and remarkable. I mean, like, we've seen a fair amount of our memberships start coming in. Um, a lot of you who I think have been watching this you just really appreciate the kind of call to action because it, it helps us keep everybody employed. It helps us keep everybody productive so that we can be emerging out of this time, you know, with hopefully a whole set of different experiences and different pots and artwork that people can see. Um, last week, I don't know if you're on here, Martin, but Martin Skia, who someone I know from, uh, from years ago, you know, signed up right away for membership. Um, Liz Vorlicek, an old friend from Alfred, uh, appreciate you signing up as well. Um, you know, we do have a, a, a membership kind of opportunity right now where if you sign up for a membership, either renew it, increase it, or become a new member, uh, you get a 25% off discount on a, f a future purchase at the Bray. So either the clay business, the gallery, or classes or workshops, up to $200. So... If you sign up for a fifty dollar membership, you can get that money right back. Um, so we, you know, a number of you have, have already taken advantage of that. I think that's great. You know, so that, it, and again, the the reasoning is like if you can help us out now, then we hope that we can provide programs for you in the future and and uh, something that would benefit you. So if, if that's something you're able to do, and we know not everybody is right now because of, there's so much going on, but um, we'd appreciate it. You just go onto the website and and sign up for that. Okay, so I've got the white slip on here, and as you can see, you know, the brush does provide these like really nice textures on the surface, so I'm just kind of going with the the wheel, like the kind of round activity of the wheel, so it's you've got this like loop that's going around it. You know, you can also play with the brush and see like how you can maybe play with different texturing by changing that direction and the a action on the surface. You could play with thickness on the surface. It just gives you a little bit of a different, different energy, I think, once the glaze goes on top. So I'm gonna try that here. And that's the other thing I like about my little basement studio is that it just feels like you can play and experiment. It doesn't feel quite as formal as my my normal studio. So give myself space to screw up, try some things that maybe I haven't done before. There. So you can kind of see that through the through the camera. I'll try to bring it up a little closer. You can see the, the vertical vertical texture. 
All right, I'm going to put this aside and pull out one of the pots that I slipped previously. Oh, here's one that I did last night. I was wearing sweatpants and sandals when I was working on this. Um, tried to dress up a little bit more nicely for you, for you all today. Uh, so here, what I'll do is, wait a minute, to, to apply the decoration, I've got these tools. Unfortunately, we don't carry these in the clay business, but we probably have something similar. And this is a little, it's a Korean decorating tool. So if you can't quite see it, but it's like a piece of steel with a little rounded hook on the edge of it. So I can use this to essentially draw on the surface of the, of the clay by removing material. Um, one thing I like to do is I use a soft lead pencil. I think I mentioned this in an earlier broadcast where you can kind of draw out, uh, you know, draw out what, what I want to, like some marks or maybe sketch out a little bit on the surface. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go with like a vine pattern that I've done in the past. I'm just kind of sketching this out on the surface lightly and this lead will burn out in the firing. So it's just to provide a bit of a registration mark or some guidance. Okay, so we've got that. And then, you know, from here I'll have these kind of swirling, we'll call them swirling vine extensions, something like that. That's following some regularity and rhythm. Okay, so that's the basis. That's the kind of structure of my decoration is I'm going to carve this out and then work around that. So I'll take my my trusty tool here and I'm going to just start carving along that line. And these pots, just FYI, like these are pots that I'm trying to prepare for our our new spring sale, which will replace the Mother's Day sale. So I'm hoping to be able to figure out the glaze and make them so they look nice enough and make those available for sale. Some of the other things that are coming up for us, um, like our education program has been like hard at work because you know, they were the first ones to shut down and um, you know, trying to figure out what to do when you can't have classes on site. So Lindsay and Nick and all the interns and the folks over in the education program have been really looking at sort of possibilities for us in terms of digital content and online learning. And they're making some great progress. So what they've been focused on is like building out a series of video tutorials. Sorry, Siri thought I was talking to her. Um, but they're building out some video tutorials with current and past residents, um, including uh, Jason Burnett and Sunshine Cobb and Nick Danielson on topics like cups and handles or Jason's doing some stuff with screen printing and Nick's been working on uh, tar paper templates, building slab work out of tar paper templates. Yes, this is slip on the outside of this pot. I'm carving through it with this little hook tool. Um, and it's pretty exciting. I mean, they're, they're getting really good at like video editing and the production value of the videos. Um, it's not kind of ready for prime time at this moment, but very soon we'll be rolling some of that content out. So you can stay tuned on the Instagram feed or sign up for the Bray email list on our website. Um, but it's exciting. I mean, like, you know, those types of things will be available for people really all over the world. And then I think the next level of it would be that, you know, schedule uh, direct meetings with some of the artists here, you know, Zoom meetups and that kind of thing um, that could build off of it. And you know, we're also looking at like how you integrate like all the different programs at the Bray. So like if you have Nick who's making work out of tar paper templates, you know, then 
we can actually produce those at the bray and then sell them through the clay business. So, you know, there might be packages that we can sell through the clay business that we can send uh, through the mail to people who are interested in doing those projects. So really cool stuff. I think, I mean, those all those folks have been doing such a great job, just being creative, you know, really trying to innovate as much as possible. Okay, so I've got this fine pattern established on the surface of the piece, and now I'm gonna start carving leaves on there. So here we'll start at the tip of that one. I also, you know, in prior broadcasts, I was talking about, I think like on a few occasions, I've listed off all the different Instagram accounts that we have at the Bray, which is, there's one for the sales gallery, there's one for the education program, there's one for facilities. Um, but recently we were talking in our staff meeting that maybe it makes more sense to consolidate all those so that we just have them pushing out from the main Bray Instagram page. Um, so I think that's very likely going to happen just so that we're not watering down the amount of people that are uh, following us, but that we can try to increase our posting in overall to hit all those different program areas, um, but they'll all be kind of funneling out of the main account. So just as a heads up, you know, it's very likely we'll be shutting down the gallery and the facilities and the other ones, um, and then trying to just increase the frequency in the main account. So if you don't follow, I mean, you probably do follow the main account now if you're here, but uh, if you follow some of those others, you may notice that happening sometime soon. And this part is the kind of tedious part, but very satisfying. You can carve through through this slip. And this motif is one that, you know, I've seen just on a lot of historical, like a lot of folk pots from China or Korea. You know, we have this um, this motif that's sort of born out of looking at different natural elements. So this is a, a vine pattern that has its own structure to it. So, you know, this these leaves will continue along the surface. Let me just see if there's other things I can touch base on here. Um, I think I mentioned this last week, but we do currently have a digital issue catalog for the show that would have been up at Enseca right now from the Bray. Um, all right, Adam said, maybe organize the content by hashtag. Great idea, Adam. I think that that is something that we've talked about, um, but that would make sense to be able to sort of categorize the different posts that are happening on the Bray Instagram page, the main main page. Um, but yeah, the Enseca catalog is currently on our website, so you can go check that out. You can actually see the exhibition and some install shots from uh, the Bray exhibition that would have been up at Capital One headquarters, the credit card company, kind of a big deal. Um, and there's some really great work by current and recent residents. Okay, so you're starting to you can kind of see where this is headed, right? So, you know, I'd probably spend the next 15 to 20 minutes just going around this and continuing these little dart patterns along the outside of the work. Okay, um, let's see, I wanted to... I'd take a little tour here. So I mentioned 
I've got this little, for those of you who didn't see this last week, this is my treadle wheel. So I've got it stuck in the corner here. And I forgot to point this out last week, but check this out. This is like floor to ceiling pegboard, very handy. Uh, we inherited that, by the way. Um, but it, it's allowed me to put all these like crazy shelves and little hooks and things like that up on the wall. Um, but I love this wheel. I mean, it really, it's got a copper pan on the, for the splash pan. And then here you can kind of see the, the crank mechanism that turns the flywheel. The only thing that maybe isn't ideal about it is the seat. You know, it's got this wooden seat, but with a pad on it. So it does get a little uncomfortable, but it's kind of like riding a bike. Um, I wanted to show, I'm going to flip the camera around here. After last week's uh, broadcast, my kids came down and we ended up working on these little pots here. So I'm showing off the work of my kids. This is Florence's little double handled braided handles uh chalice this is one actually this is florence's this one's gavin's and then dun 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 that's some of my new work that i'm making very excited about it um let's see here i want to try something that i read about might be able to add some variety to this. Um, let's see, until then. All right. This is my brother from another mother, Sam Chung. Hi, right, can you hear me? Yeah, I is can it? hear you. Holy cow, it's working. Sam, you're looking good. Might need yeah. a haircut. Yeah, Let's... you know, I haven't gotten a haircut in weeks, so like everybody, right? And uh, I got to keep saying, I'll cut your hair. And I said, uh, I'll just wait, you know, maybe I'll wait till everything is good, good to go. Yeah. So, sure. so anyway, nice to that podcast or whatever uh, you call this thing, live, you know, Instagram live, Instagram live broadcast. Yep. So you're in your studio, right? You're, are you hold up? Not, you're not teaching today? Uh, no, it's Friday. So we usually, we, we just had like a department meeting this morning on zoom. So you know, today was just get up early for the meeting, sit there with, you know, 45, 50 faces in front of you on a screen and uh, listen to how they're dealing with the whole crisis. And then, um, yeah, I'm, so I'm spending a lot of time in my studio, which is where I am right now. Okay. And um, yeah, so um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you can see. Oh. Yeah, show us what you're working on. Oh, uh, right now. Well, so I've been working on a lot of a lot of pots actually, just making um cups and um some bowls and things like this. Um I don't know if you can see. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Cups, bowls, and then the other day uh I was speaking with uh, Alessandro over there in Helena and he's like, "Hey, if you ever make any cappuccino or espresso cups, uh, I'd like to get an espresso cup. And I thought, you know, I never made espresso cups. So I just, um, I was just kind of experimenting. I mean, I've made small cups that probably have been used for espresso. So yeah, I was just working on these, uh, this whole series here, just playing around with different uh, handles or some little, I don't know if you can see little prototypes and things like that. Oh yeah, those look great. Yeah, they're kind of crumpled and, and uh, some teapots. Uh, so I don't know. I'm just staying busy. Sorry if you're getting dizzy from this. Maybe I should do this. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is this is Sam Chung down in Tempe, Arizona, at his studio. Uh, That's correct. And he was trying to do an, uh, an Italian accent just a minute ago of our friend Alessandro. Not, not, not <laughs> just Italian. Gatto. Not just Italian. It was like his. Uh, he has this very very deep low voice. He does. It's Alessandro true. knows, right? And it's a very, uh, it's very suave. Yes. Hey, 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 hey Amy, how's up? From, what's up? From Genoa. 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 Oh. Yeah, oh, yes. Amy went to uh, Ari Photography there. She went to uh, 
Northern Michigan where I taught oh, okay. years ago. Yeah, yeah. Way up. Another way up sister south. from another from another mother. So I'm, I've been working <laughs> on these teapots. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to figure this uh, stuff like this. And I don't, you know, like recently I've not been making lots of uh, teapots, but I thought, geez, you know, I mean, if there's ever a time when you feel like you're in a vacuum, this is it to kind of like screw around and play with stuff. So I I made these things with uh, these lids with um, oh wow little stra strainer holes on the bottom like this. Yeah. And I, I don't know if it's going to work, you know, like you put tea leaves in here and let's say this is your teapot. I don't know if you can see like that, like like this, and then this okay. guy goes in like this, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna make a little cloud um, hand built lid that I'll attach later with some glaze. Okay, but um, so that's awesome. I did something like this years ago, and so I've just been trying to revisit this. And I remember Kenyon was making some of these. Kenyon Hansen, if you guys don't know Kenyon, he's a he was also another resident there at the Bray, wasn't he, years ago? Yep, yep, yeah. and another person who's trapped up in northern Michigan. <laughs> oh, yeah, so yeah, to the UP there. Uh, so, yeah, he's he's great. He's, uh, there's some other guys. He's he's an awesome dude. Kenyon was in my first ceramics class, or he, he took his first ceramic class in, at northern Michigan. That's right. Didn't you say that he didn't like talk at all and he just sort of hid in the corner because he's so shy? Yeah. So Kenyon was like uh, taking my hand building class. And like, I think I distinctly remember one assignment was like make a Joman pot, like a historical Joman pot. Okay. And, uh, and then I'd be taking attendance. I'm like, where's Kenyon? And then I'd see this little body in the corner of the room, just like hunched over like this working. And I was like, <laughs> Kenyon? He's like, yeah, I'm here. Uh, <laughs> but he, I, I, at least at that time, maybe he wasn't, but. Uh oh, we're losing you. My director we was calling We me. lost you there for a second. It was my director just calling me, and I just hung up on her, so. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll give her a call after, after this. It's like that um, face you were, you were making the other night when we were talking on the phone. The like, which face is that? The frozen internet face. Oh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those of you who've been using Zoom a lot, you know, you'll sometimes lose somebody, and they'll just be, they'll be frozen in that moment where they is probably a very unflattering face. And yeah. They just like I thought, like, and then <laughs> or they they talk like, so I I was thinking that. Maybe we could go to lunch today. <laughs> yep. A lot of that for sure. Or people who are like not sure how Zoom works and they're like, Do I talk into do I talk here? <laughs> Where do I hello? Yeah. Yeah, or or they don't turn their they don't turn their mute button on and then they're in the bathroom flushing the toilet or something, you know. This is always not not the most yep. Yep. Pl pleasant, pleasant experience. I I've seen lots of, I've heard lots of dogs on Zoom calls, that's for sure. Dogs barking. Oh, oh. very nice. Yeah. Anyway, so. speaking of uh, your director calling, um, like we have a board meeting next week at the Bray, which, oh. you know, just in terms of like ultimate punishment in terms of all the stuff that has to happen. Um, so if I have any board m members watching, uh, I should be sending out all the materials to you, but I'm not doing it right now, but hopefully soon. <laughs> Hopefully in the next few hours, I'll be able to get all that stuff out. Um, it's just been so busy, you know? We got to make make our pots, do our broadcasts. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you took this on, and we were just talking about how how great and committed you've been to this, doing this each week. And I think I might have seen some of the first one, and then I haven't seen it since then, but I didn't realize you've been making stuff each week and um, doing stuff. Yeah. What what's up, Adam? It's kind of kept Adam me just going, made. just making something. I mean, it's been hard to make stuff. Um, I did have a question. Uh, someone asking, I think it's me, Archie. Um, but yes, I am engraving. I'm drawing. I've got a little. <laughs> at least you know, 
it was Archie, not Sam. So I've got this little carving tool here <laughs> with the hook on the bottom and I'm carving into the, this stoneware clay that has a white slip on it. So while Sam's uh, showing us his studio, I'm just sitting here. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll show you around the studio, I guess. Um, uh, this is, well, this is the space. It's like, a, it's about the size of a three car garage. And, and uh, your studio is um, amazing. I've been it's experimenting awesome. with some drawing, some, some Corona cloud monsters, um, seeing if they're gonna work. Uh, can you flip the camera? Good. I'm gonna flip this thumb. Yeah. Thing. Okay. There. That's better. Oh, there we go. Anyway, that's that's sweet. Easier. No. Okay. There. That's right. Re recycle all my clay in here. And then I know there's some work in progress. You can see. Thank you, Mount Pleasant Mount Pottery. Mount Pleasant Pottery. Yep. I am a fan of Sam's work as well. Thank you very much. There's some pieces here. These are some cups I've been casting out of this translucent porcelain. You guys might have seen this stuff on my. Jeez, man, that's nice. I don't know if it works. You got a lot of stuff going on in the studio. Um, yeah, I'm just doing lots of crazy things. I don't know how you guys are, but it's it's sort of like you're floating in a vacuum, and you just. It's as if somebody said, okay, guess what? You're retired, which you're not. You're still working, but it's like now now do what you want to do. So I've just been doing all kinds of – I made a mold of this thing. I've been making these vases that are sort of like based on these Korean traditional hats. Oh, yeah, I saw those. Those are and, great. And so it's like flowers in here. And then I thought, you know, I'm going to make some light covers uh, of those things. So I made this mold. Uh for that and then all random stuff i was screwing around my wife was like make me some jewelry out of that same translucent porcelain so i made these little cloud kind of things that i'm gonna sand down and oh nice um yeah this porcelain is somebody asked what kind of porcelain this is um basically a translucent porcelain that i got from a a guy in china who's like a um where he's like a porcelain canister i don't know that's all he does is experiment with porcelains okay. so i bought some off him and he basically takes their very very white porcelain and mixes it with glaze i don't know what his recipe is but huh. you know it's very finicky so it cracks easily and it warps easily so but um but that's where i got the porcelain from china so i i credit for it but yeah somebody asked me where i get my <laughs> inventions i don't know I don't know, you know, like this is all like, this is completely random. I did this like right after we were Whoa, quarantined, sweet. this kind of moon jar with um, Yeah. And so, so I, I actually made this for a demo at a workshop in Mesa Art Center. And I brought it home and I just started painting on it. So that's what I've been doing on those bowls, thinking that I'll do that. But so that was just a response to coronavirus. This is sort of like this beginning of a cloud form that I'll paint on later that this is what it might look like when it's finished, something like that. So the other one's like a um, coronavirus angst pot. Like, is that angst decoration? Yeah, this is sort of like, um, I try to draw like one cloud that goes continuously all around the form. And okay. then, and then uh, at, at places it sort of mutates into this monster with teeth. Gotcha. Uh, nice. Yeah, this is, is here that is not sam sam is on bottom steve is this is sam steve's on top i don't know somebody yep. said who's sam. steve here we'll have to wear we our get shirts confused a lot yeah name tags um um yeah we should get name tags we have some shirts going for Ensika, right that we didn't actually get them done yeah unfortunately just... we'll have to wait until next year we have we had a pretty sweet t-shirt that we are going to unveil at this year's Ansika conference. Um, but it will make an appearance. We'll, we'll bring it out uh, sometime next year. Next year, hopefully. Yeah, we should. Can we see your, your, they're kind of fun. There's my kiln area. Sweet. So it's a guile. Yeah. It's an 18, it's an 18 cubic. Um, it's under a wooden roof. So 
Thank God it's like well insulated and stuff. But yeah, amazing. The city doesn't really make a big deal out of it, you know. Uh, in, they just like they just want the gas money, you know. It's like, oh, we'll put in a gas meter for you. So there's like kiln. Giles, great kiln. I, I mean, I use it use it at ASU. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> It's like yeah. evolved. So this guy's getting a little crack here. If anybody knows about like arches and how secure they are, I was a little bit worried about this guy because it's starting to, I know it's natural for things to crack, but that, that, that kind of worries me. Anyway, yeah. Paul Giles says, don't worry. Uh, patch it. It's something that bad happens. I don't know. I, maybe <laughs> I'll ask you about it later. If somebody out there in the okay. ceramics world yeah. is good about it arches that somehow fail this guy's yeah. cool i just got this last year so the, these guys these little whoa things, the program i don't want to do an advertisement for scud you can just type in whatever program and whatever you say you can do a cone file it's pretty fancy scud's a good company we actually sell scut kilns through the clay biz. So if anybody's interested in buying a scut, you can order one from the Bray clay business. And we actually didn't rehearse that. So that was, uh, this is just oh, really? coming up in the moment. No, yeah, we just, just came up. Look at that. Wow, look at all that inventory. Holy smokes. No, you know, a lot of this is going to meet the hammer sometime this summer or this spring because um, it's like a, you know how you have a bunch of seconds that you just can't get rid of, can't quite get rid of? Yeah, I've got and, that too. And then, yeah. And then, um, yeah, thanks, um, the, the Washington Pottery guy. I'll, I'll <laughs> contact Paul. They wanted to know if you get a 10% um, discount off your treadle wheels. Oh, that's uh, that's Jake Brodsky. What's up, Jake? Jake, I'll give you 10% off of something else. How about that? <laughs> Jake is a potter, uh, resident at Pottery Northwest um, from oh. Helena. And, uh, oh, awesome. Awesome. Place. Great guy. Used to work at the Bray in the education and helping a bunch of us out too in the studios. And hope you're staying safe out there, Jake. Nice. Anyway, I'm learning how to play the guitar too. I bought a guitar over. Uh, so that's what oh, I do like when mini, I sit here. Mini guitar. Yeah, it's like a baby. <laughs> that's a little Gretsch. And my friend who plays guitar said, you should just buy this small little parlor guitar. It's like tiny and you can just take it everywhere. So so I, okay. I sit in front of YouTube and learn, learn from some guy. Nice. Anyway, that's kind of that's kind of what's going on. And there's a bunch of old work up there. From, okay. From, from the past. I kind of like archive of... Yeah, so I should make a clay guitar. That's a good idea. That would sound really a little bit um, not as acoustic, would it? Maybe, maybe it's a new sound. Awesome. You know, the other day well, I, I had thanks a- Thanks for oh, taking the time to- Oh, yeah. Oh, other day what? No, 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 no. We'll, we'll zoom sign call? off here because I got to call my- no, I got to call her back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she, she called me earlier, so I got to I got to call my director. I I, I basically hung up on her. Yeah, I turned off her call when you she called. So anyway, that looks really well, nice, Steve. That that cup looks really nice. Yeah, well, I, I finished carving it while you were giving stoneware. us a tour. So. Yeah, I mean, you've been working with the dark stoneware and slip too, and some of your work haven't you mm -hmm. the, the bunchan inspired work i've got a sweet cup of yours totally yeah it's a nice break well, from the porcelain isn't it like kind of being able to throw it's refreshing and um totally just like you can you can be a little looser or you for something for some reason porcelain always makes me inclined to work with it in a more refined way. Uh huh. And can you see your, oh, you froze there for a second. Either that or you had like frozen Instagram face. Oh, 
I don't know if the connection's bad. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, the um I feel like the stoneware just intuitively I feel the 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 freedom to kind of be a little bit more loose and expressive with it. Yeah. Especially with the slip work too. So that's what I like about it. It's a nice counterpoint to this to the porcelain. Yeah. I like how you use the brush when you're uh, doing the textures on the clouds and then kind of following up on that with the carved lines. Mm. I thought mm. that was really Thanks. pretty beautiful. Yeah, it's uh, um, nice. Yeah. Well, it's fun to do, as you know, as you know, as as you're doing yourself. Yeah, Get, getting back into it. Cool. Well, thanks for taking time. Maybe we'll have a future visit with Sam in a in another broadcast here. But uh, cool. this is our cool. our first time testing this out, and it seems like it works pretty well. Cool function. It's really cool. Yeah. Anyway. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks okay. for inviting me, Steve. And uh, good luck yeah. with everything over there, the brain. Thanks for tuning in, everybody who tuned in. And, yeah. Uh, um, be well. Be safe. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. All right. Take care. Okay. Talk to you later. All right. All right see you. Okay. Well, I think uh, I'll just show you real quick here. Appreciate Sam Chung. My my good friend uh, taking some time and uh, showing us what he's working on in the studio. I mean, he's amazing artist, um, you know, really great potter and, and uh, an artist and just somebody who's, uh, whose work I've appreciated for so long. So it's great to see that. Um, I'll show you, this is the finished carved piece that I was working on while Sam was giving us a tour. I just kind of carved the rest of those, those leaves on here. And, you know, another option is I could even carve out, all of this, uh, the white inside here. So if I wanted all the leaves to be a darker clay for more contrast, I could certainly do that. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now because it'll probably take me a while, but um, I think sign off. I just wanted to say thanks to everybody again for tuning in. Um, again, if, you know, stay tuned with what's going on at the Bray. We've got, uh, we've got, you know, the, the clay business is willing to do a 10% off on anything I did here today. We're still selling through the gallery, so please take a look and order. Um, if you can sign up for a membership, we, we'd appreciate it. Um, but yeah, just uh, hopefully we'll be back here next week and um, everything will be maybe a little bit better. So, okay, that's it for now. And we will see you all sometime soon. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>